After a month of dailing this thing, it's finally time to review the Book 75. In this video, I'll be talking about the issues that I had, what I would do to improve the user experience, and also do a direct comparison to not only other HE boards that I own, but also compare it to what it sounded like when it first arrived, and also talk about a theory that I have about these open bottom housing switches. Bear with me as this is my first keyboard review ever, and if you feel like I'm missing out on stuff that you'd like to hear about, definitely let me know down in the comments below. As a quick disclaimer, this board was sent out to me by Mellatrix themselves. However, that will not affect my opinion on this board whatsoever. Huge thanks to Mellatrix for sending this unit out though. I also want to mention that I cannot and will not be doing any scientific latency testing since I neither have the hardware nor the passion to do so. Everything that I tell you in this review will be out of my experience of dailying this thing for a month straight. And also, whenever I say HE, I'm talking about Hall Effect and not High Explosion. If you're at all interested in peripheral enthusiast reviews, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it in order to be notified of all my upcoming reviews. When it comes to these keyboard reviews that I will be doing from now on, make sure to keep in mind that I view these from a different perspective than your average gaming keyboard reviewer. I've been in the keyboard enthusiast scene since around 2018. Over the years, I've built tens of bots and developed quite the passion for keyboards. Ever since I got my hands on my wooden 60 HE about one and a half years ago, I found it difficult to go back to MX for gaming, so I ended up getting really into modding my Wooting and also other HE boards lately in order to make them sound and also feel as good as possible. And if you're interested in modding your wooding yourself, definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on my upcoming Ultimate Wooding 60 HE modding guide. And if there's one thing that I've learned with these HE keyboards is that they'll never be able to sound as good as an enthusiast grade MX board, at least not yet with the way that the switches are engineered. Anyways, that's enough yapping about my key blower. About time we get into this thing. Getting into the boring stuff, we'll start off with the unboxing experience. The keyboard comes inside of this box and inside of the box, you'll find the keyboard inside of this disgusting carrying case where the black color wears off completely as you can see by the inside of the box and also by my fingers turning black if I just rub against the case a bit. I did mention this to the team already but I don't know if the new batches will have fixed this issue already. Other than that you get some allen keys to actually open up the keyboard itself if you were to do that and then you also get a very basic and very short called USB-A to USB-C cable. This board spots a 22.14 millimeter front height which makes this a real chonker of a board. I personally I personally could never use this thing without a wrist rest and after asking around it's a common trend to write with floating wrists on this thing if you're not using one. And as you can see because of that huge front height you definitely will have to angle your wrist up quite a bit in order to play in this keyboard. The typing angle on the Book 75 is 5 degrees, which I did find a bit flat at first, but got used to basically instantly. But then again, that is only because I do constantly use a wrist rest due to an old snowboard injury that I had. So I did get used to it pretty quickly and it wasn't a real issue for me personally. As a comparison, the Tofu 60 has a typing angle of 7% and the Elemais with the big feet sits at around 7.5%. The plate is made out of aluminum and there are no other options. And before anyone asks, me, no, this board does not do 8K polling. What it does have though is per key RGB lighting, which I personally couldn't care less about. As a European, the first thing that I have to mention here is that this board is ANSI only. The layout is an awesome take on a 75% layout, which is probably my new favorite 75% layout of all time since the bottom row is super symmetrical and the blocker on the right side has that extra flair to that visual appearance. I also truly appreciate the two keys in the top right corner instead of a knob since I personally use this about a thousand times as much as I'd ever use a knob. Most other 75% layouts out there are either not symmetrical introduce extra space beneath the bottom row like this one, or simply look worse than a nightmare. So this is definitely a very valid take on a super base layout. The switches that this board spots are the KS37Bs, but absolutely dunked in loop as you can see. Since most HE switches cope much better with overlooping than MX switches, I don't see this as a real issue personally. However, I do definitely know some people that are very affected by that. I much prefer very slightly looped case 37 bs since they feel much easier to activate to them, just like you'd find on the Endgame Gear Hall Effect keyboard. I personally am fine with that choice here in terms of sound and feel. However, there are definitely some issues with this type of switches. Like most other HE switches out there, these switches have a hole in the bottom housing. Over time, some loop will escape through this hole and the sound deteriorates much more on this type of switch compared to a 
close bottom housing switch, just like this KS20T Jade, for example, that still sounds just as good as stock despite months of usage. And in order to prove that difference, here is a sound test from my WSD keys with a ton of usage over a whole month of dailying it, and some of the keys that are much closer to a stock condition because I have barely used them. As you can hear, the difference in rattliness is pretty freaking huge. So definitely keep this in mind if sound is something that you care a lot about. I know these are completely two different rows, but I'm not comparing the deepness of the sound of the switch here. I'm comparing the rattliness itself. That is the only focus on that sound test. And you cannot tell me that there isn't a huge difference in terms of rattliness. Now to another issue with the switch. Due to the sheer amount of power that the KS37B switches need to be read constantly, and also most if not all boards not have having split power delivery for both the HE sensors and the RGB LEDs on the PCB, there is a chance of all Hall Effect boards with KS37B switches breaking. I cannot say when or if that will happen with your board, but this issue is present on basically all boards that spots this switch without split power delivery. Since the only way to save it from that issue would be lowering the power consumption drastically with the side effect of severely depleting the potential of the Hall Effect sensor poles. The best example of of this issue is certainly the VXE ATK65 or the 75 with the Gateron version, which has been breaking and dying left and right after firmware updates and eventually was pulled off the market completely. In terms of the stock experience, this is the best sounding and also feeling keyboard that has ever been on my desk. These stabs are really well tuned, except for maybe my spacebar, which could need a tiny bit of straightening. These switches are of course covered in loop thoroughly and there is no spring or case pinging to be heard despite this being a full aluminum case and plate. The aluminum plate is a great combination of not being too harsh like a steel plate like on a Wooding 60HE and also not flexing too much so that the Hall Effect sensors will get incorrect reads. The keycaps are some decently thick double shot PBT cherry profile keycaps. They don't feel cheap and the deeper sound of PBT here is much appreciated and I think that they are a great choice that you don't need to swap out. And in order to show you how this keyboard is actually engineered, I will also open it up for you and show you everything inside of it. So this is what the bottom of the case looks like. Here you simply take off these reusable plastic covers that cover the screw holes and then you can either use the Allen keys that actually come with the keyboard itself or you just get out your iFixit kit. Then you unscrew these four screws and what you greet with then is the top part of the case which by the way also just is full aluminum and then of course the bottom assembly. As you can see this is a pretty conventional gasket mount just with these foam sleeves that rest on the outer border of the bottom case and sandwich between that top part of the case. This is not screwed down whatsoever this is just a normal gasket mount that you can just lift like this and then you can plug out the daughter board here and here's the reason why Mellatrix is actually an enthusiast brand and not just your average gaming keyboard brand as you can see Mellatrix cares a lot about sound not only because of these foam gaskets but also because there is plate foam between the PCB and the plate here and also a thick piece of porn foam underneath. This helps so much in terms of sound dampening and this is where we normally would put layers and layers of tape just to try and reduce that pinginess. And with this board you don't even have to do anything, it's just freaking goaded in a stock condition. Then in the bottom part of the housing you also have some more foam that is really thick and makes sure that there is no pinginess that comes from the case itself. And yeah that's that's already about it for the teardown. Here I also do want to mention that this bottom housing and the top housing is the same as the Zoom 75, which is an enthusiast mechanical keyboard kit that you can get from Mellatrix as well. Normally there are also tons of spare parts available, so in theory you could just take out your Hall Effect sandwich here and then putting a mechanical module in here and boom you have a freaking 
goaded mechanical keyboard. And that is definitely what I am planning on doing in the future when I'm not using this for gaming anymore, especially because I love the layout so much. If you're getting this board, definitely make sure to instantly upgrade to the latest firmware, which will be linked down in the description below, since else you'll run into tons of issues when changing your settings. Quick feedback to Mellatrix here, please check for firmware updates in your web UI instead of relying on the customer to find the very well hidden link on your store page. Once you're on the latest version, you can head over to book75.melatrix.com to configure your keyboard. And yes, you heard that correctly. It is only web UI, no software. Once you're on the web UI, you can simply press connect, choose your device, connect, and you're done. When making changes to your config, definitely be sure to be very patient and constantly making sure that your board says connected up here. Ignore this field that says disconnected. This is just a translation error since this is supposed to be a disconnect button. Militrix, please fix. If you're having the same issue as me with this key not working, you can rebind it here. And if you're a European like me and you're looking to bind that less than greater than backslash key that is completely missing on the ANSI layout, well, you're fucked. Currently, you cannot add a key to any of the layers since it's missing from the bindable options completely. So, Melotrix, please fix. However, what I really enjoyed was being able to adjust the keys up here in the right hand corner and also the right side, since hotkeys like this are simply not a thing on smaller layouts like 60%. This provides you a lot of customizability and also opens up a lot of doors if you take advantage of those keys, especially when using layers as well. When it comes to my experience with the Book 75 and its rapid trigger implementation in game, I haven't had any issues personally whatsoever. As I've already mentioned, I don't do any scientific testing, but after months of use and also doing side by side comparisons in game, I can comfortably say that the rapid trigger works as intended. However, I do notice a ever so slight difference in terms of the feeling when it comes to the snappiness of the board. My Wooding 60HE on Tachyon mode does feel more instant and after checking out the reviews on this board it definitely seems to be the case of an overall latency difference in terms of the key activation of around 10 to 30 milliseconds depending on your setup. And also as some quick feedback here to Melatrix, I really wish these sensitivities were just in millimeters and not some obscure number from 1 to 20, especially because it doesn't make much sense when the total travel is 4 millimeters. Now when it comes to the different versions that are available for this keyboard there is the induction coil which is my color variant there's also this shockwave version which i personally am not too keen on and then for the zoom 75 he which is the same keyboard virtually just with the top and bottom casing reused from their mechanical keyboards there is a black and a white version the only difference on these models are the colors and engravings on the case and also the color of the keycaps of course and that's about it since i don't do any scientific testing i will give you a quick comparison to the he boards that i have here and tell you what I think about the boo compared to what I've been using for this past year and a half. However, I will not include sound tests of my other boards since these are all far from stock. So the comparison wouldn't make any sense from a customer's perspective since my other boards don't align with what you would be getting if you were to buy any of these. Compared to my Wooding 60HE, which is fully tricked out, as I've already said, I do notice an ever so slight difference in terms of latency in game. I feel kind of more one-to-one -one in game when playing Fortnite and shit like that. However, the stock condition of a Wooding 60HE compared with what you get with the book is uncomparable. A stock condition Wooding 60HE or 60HE Plus with the stock liquor switches, it is not comparable whatsoever. It's basically like comparing a voice of an angel to a dumpster fire. But yeah, if you care a lot about performance, go for a Wooding. If you care a lot about sound, Go for the boot. The comparison to my Endgame Gear KV65HE is a lot more interesting because these bought the same switches, however, they are only ever so slightly looped on the Endgame Gear board. Actually, it's only the springs that I ever so slightly loop, and the rest is bone dry. So, whilst this doesn't sound as nice, some people definitely prefer the feel of these switches because they feel more effortless. The thing is, I've already looped the switches on this board, so it's difficult to do a side by side comparison of that feeling now for me personally. But yeah, yeah, the stock sound is obviously a lot better on the book, especially in terms of the sound of the case itself, because there's so much sound dampening in here, whilst the endgame gear board only uses some silicone layers. I will also be doing a full review of this keyboard very soon, so definitely stick around for that in the future. In terms of the performance, these most likely are very similar. But yet again, I don't do any scientific testing, but going off in-game performance and also the kind of lack in 
really detailed configuration is very similar with these two boards. So here, if you care a lot about sound, go for the Boog 75. If you don't care that much about sound and also are interested in an ISO layout, the Endgame Gear board could be very interesting to you, especially because it's much cheaper. And as a last comparison, I also have my slightly modified Echo Year of Dragon here. I will be doing a review of this in the future. However, so far, the sound is incredibly superior over on the Boog 75. And when it comes to the performance, the Echo board is definitely nothing special so far from my testing. And there is a lot that Echo need to improve with on this board. And now to some sound tests. The sound has definitely grown quite a bit on me and I really do enjoy typing on it on a daily basis. But of course, it is still a Hall Effect keyboard and it will never sound anything close to a mechanical keyboard. At least not yet. Now, to the conclusion. Who is this board for? If you're looking for the best sounding and feeling enthusiast grade Hall Effect board in terms of stock condition, the Boog 75 simply doesn't have any competition. No, the Polar 65 V2 Neo Tokyo doesn't count since that has nothing to do with an enthusiast grade keyboard keyboard, but of course that one also sounds pretty decent since it uses the same type of overlooped KS37B switches. Despite not really introducing any flex, the gasket mount in this board helps the sound a lot in terms of the consistency across the board especially, and it is uncomparable to something like a tray mount keyboard. After having been in the keyboard hobby for around 6 years, I can comfortably say that this is the first keyboard I've ever owned that I didn't want or need to mod. It's that good of a stock condition. So if that is what you're looking for in a Hall Effect board, definitely go for this thing. However, I also have to tell you who this board is not for. If you either don't like using wrist rests, having your wrists floating in the air while typing or have issues with your left wrist, especially when gaming, definitely don't get this key. At a front height of over 22 millimeters compared with the rather flat 5% typing angle, I can definitely see a lot of gamers having comfort issues with this thing. And I would highly recommend using a wrist rest if you're worried. I also wouldn't recommend this board if you're a performance schizo since Wooding is the only company out there that does everything in house and has been proven to be the absolute goats in terms of performance and latency over and over again. Also, needless to say, you shouldn't get this board if you're worried about it breaking due to the issues that the KS37Bs introduce. Hopefully Melatrix and all other brands using the switch will move to the upcoming KS37C variant as soon as possible or even an entirely different HG switch type. And if you want my personal opinion, I'd say I'd refrain from getting any board with the KS37B switches right now, including but not limited to the Polar 65 V2 Neo Tokyo, Endgame Gear KB65HE, VXE ATK65, 75 with the Gatoron switches and so on. Since they all have a chance of dying on you in the near future and I'd personally much rather invest in a board that doesn't. Other than that, this thing is a joy to type on and I will definitely be using it from time to time until the day it dies. And once that happens, I'll turn it into a mechanical build with some Zoom 75 spare parts because this layout is freaking awesome. Well, that was one hell of a video. Thanks for sticking around all the way until the end. I really did give it my all with this video since I want to be sure to cover as much as possible. And as you can see, there's much more to a Hall Effect keyboard than your average gaming mouse. If there's anything I missed out on that you would have liked to hear about, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll try my best to cover that aspect in my future HE keyboard reviews. And also make sure to hit the subscribe button and a notification bell right next to it to be notified once those videos come out. Some of the next HE keyboard videos that are in the pipeline are my full review of the Egg KB65HE, my ultimate guide to modding your Wooting 60HE, and also my full review on the Echo Year of Dragon, but that one will take a while since I only just got that thing in. But for now, it's time to go back to my goon cave. Peace out.